Hello everybody and big welcome to a bandless discussion with a TO Dave who's been hosting a, a German tournament called Kormander League. I hope I pronounced that with a good Deutsch accent. So uh, tell us about it because this is actually a very good subject in regards to some of the bans that have happened in the current EDH format. Yes, so uh, hello guys, my name is Dave and uh, as Mon said, I'm German, I'm West German and uh, two of my friends and me, we host our own tournaments. So it's EDH of course and uh, why is Mon bringing up this local tournament? Because we created own ban list and as of right now, this discussion is very exciting, I would say, because CEDH communities think about bringing up an own ban list. Also, Wizards of the Coast is experimenting with this kind of thing with power levels and so on. So uh, we thought about talking about our local tournament and how it came to be. Yes. And one thing we really want to highlight here, guys, is that this is not a ban list push. This is not trying to become a ban list on the format. This is just a local group doing its own thing. And we, why I really think this is good to showcase is that if you disagree with stuff, you can take things into your own hand and you can organize tournaments following your own thing. So how did this list came to be? Like, why are... I mean, there's a long list here. We're not going to go over all the cards, but... How did this uh, develop? As I said, two of my friends who are also MTG judges, so I would say they have a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge also. We thought about hosting tournaments in EDH because this is not normal in like local scenarios. Of course, you have your, uh, your big tournaments in the USA and so on, but not on a local level. We experienced that the normal ban list we have was pushing a CEDH format to a local level and most players on the local tournament cannot experience this kind of thing without becoming very frustrated very fast because many players are not used to this kind of play style. They don't have maybe the money, if it's not proxy friendly, to have this kind of 10,000 euro deck and so on. And also many people didn't want to wait in between games for like an hour because it's over on turn two. Yeah. So we took the normal ban list, every card is banned, like in the normal format, and we added and kept on adding more cards. We tested a lot, and I mean a lot. We had a lot of games, we talked to our community. We are about 40 active tournament players who come that's a lot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a lot and they come regularly and um, we have a lot of feedback. Of course, not everybody is excited about every band. You know, we have like staple commanders, green commanders. Uh, let's give an example. Salvala is a, is a commander. Many people wanted to play. It's very fast paced. It's very quick to win. But, and that's very important, the people who, who join our tournament have fun. And uh, that's all that matters because if you want to go this road and organize a tournament on a local level, you will run into the problem of people do not want to participate a second time or maybe a third time because they lose after turn two, sit there for hours and hours and hours and make like the last place or whatever. That's not an experience people want to have when they just want to have fun. You know, when it's about a lot of money or it's your favorite thing ever, it's fine. But if you've got like a, a casual group who just wants to have fun after work, I think that our current ban list at the local level is not sufficient. Yeah. So if I understand it kind of right, you wanted the, the game's duration to both be yes. shorter and a little bit longer. You would like to close the gap or you remove the edges of the time duration, it sounds like. Exactly. We wanted to have uh, um, at least like four turns. Let's say four turns is the minimum amount mm -hmm. of turns a game should have. Of course, it can go to 10 turns or 11 turns if it takes a long time. But this is what we wanted. We didn't want to have like this turn two, turn three win when people were like, turn to signet and I lose, yeah. you know? 
because that was the experience in our first tournament, in our second tournament. We had like these turn two wins by Salvala. The game was like eight minutes long and people were waiting an hour. This was not a pleasant experience for most players. And this is it. It is not about creating the fastest game possible that many CDH players like to have. Because the everyday gamer, the everyday MTG commander player is not a CDH player. So we had to adapt. And this was very successful. I mean, many, many of your viewers will see this list and yeah, they will hate it. Obviously, yeah. because they think like everything cool is banned. You've got Oracle in blue. Oracle is not working. You've got not, you don't have Rampiric Tutor. You don't have a uh, Krieg or Necropotence. All of this cool stuff is gone. So what do we even play? Like everything is banned. How do we win? <laughs> Everything is just 6-6 trample dinosaur or whatever. But I can tell you, and this is now the meta game talk, I would say. Mm -hmm. This is not what we experienced. We experienced a very diverse format, but still many of your CDH staples are viable. And I'll give you a, one example for every color, I would say. This works perfectly. We start with white. So a typical example for white, which is known all around, is Heliod and Walking Ballista. A very strong combo, a combo that people play, still play in CDH, I would say, not not on the yeah, highest level it, probably, it, but... It, no, it sees some actions sometimes in the mono-white decks, kinda. Yeah. And some Azorius blue, sometimes blue-white decks, sometimes. It's it's not one of the greater combos, uh, so to say, but it... Uh, not peers. anymore, I guess. So where do you play this deck? Of course, mono-white is an option, but also green-white enchantment. Sithis, very popular at our tournaments. It's a very strong deck, draws a lot of cards. You can play a lot of hate pieces, a lot of stacks pieces that you can adapt to your local meta game, of course. You can play your Drenith Magistrate, you can play your Collector Oof. All these staples that you know from CDH are very viable, of course. So that's why, just one example. Let's go with, what color do we do next? Very blue? Red. Red is good. Red is your classic Godo. You still have Godo. Of course, Godo costs a lot of mana. Godo's yeah. not banned. Oh, wait, you um, banned like all of his uh, mana rocks. Wait, you banned ma yeah, mana rocks. Mana rocks are banned. So yeah. you're making like it's very hard to just turbo Godo from the command zone. Does anyone it's play Godo from the command zone? We see Godo play it and also Godo win, but also it's a very nice tech for a maybe Gruel deck. Let's say Itali, ah. your Itali Gruel. Mm -hmm. Maybe plays Godo, Helm of the Host. Helm of the Host is a very strong card with Itali because it makes an Itali copy, another trigger. True. And you can main deck Godo in Itali and win out of nowhere because people don't expect it. Yeah. I've won a tournament with Itali, I've done first place and main deck Godo. Godo has won every single game. That's a, still a strong combo. You've got green. Mm -hmm. Green uh, still has tons of creature combos, of course. Elf Ball is also very popular. You've got your Marvin the Nurturer. People know it. It's yeah, very fast. Elf, you can... uh, when yeah. Elf comes into play, plus one plus one counter and you tap. Exactly. For, it goes uh, infinite power. with a lot of things. You can yeah. play a lot of combos. It's a glass cannon, I would say, because one board fight or one removal and you struggle a bit. But if you're fast enough, it's a very nice threat and uh, people expect it now because it's so fast and you have to adapt but it works so that's another example for for green let's say do you still have yisan because i don't like do yisan appear and wins yisan was actually uh, one of my first uh, cdh commanders and yeah, i don't yisan see yisan not, here so is he yisan is good? not too popular in our format because uh, i think ashaya is a key piece in nissan we don't have ashaya you, no, you don't need these. You don't need that at all, actually, in Nissan. You don't need it. Okay. No, you. I'm yes. not too familiar with new Nissan. Uh, maybe yes. I think that um, there's a chance that maybe you should ban Nissan in your tournament, because Nissan is actually really fast. I wouldn't say fast, but he's very adaptive. He's not glass yeah. cannon, and he, he usually wins with greater behemoth, you know, or a casual yeah. setting. Otherwise, if you have haste, True. you usually win with Nissan finding a way to win with the infinite mono staff of domination. Yeah. But there are, uh, but you've also removed the TMR Sabertooth, which nerves Yi-san quite a lot. So there is a chance that he is fine and not uh, broken. Uh, like the only card that is key for Yi-san, in my opinion, is TMR Sabertooth, which is on your list. Yeah. 
a lot of cut on the list. It brings down the power level, it brings down the speed, of course, the, the food chain, devoted root, hermit root, all this kind of kind of stuff. But honestly, the most important band, in our opinion, once again, we are three players, three people who are organizing this stuff. So there's no stalemate. If we talk about the card, we have to explain it properly, and then we wrote. So there's no chance of like 50-50 or anything. It's, ah, I see what you it's, mean. Yeah. It's gone or it stays, you know? And also we evaluate cards that come out. So in, at our last tournament, Nadu was banned before it was banned here, of course, you know, actually banned. Yeah, you banned Arrivi as well. The Rivi is gone, yes. Uh, was making big problems. But honestly, the most important stuff, in our opinion, is uh, fast mana. Fast mana is... Hmm. The, the thing that separates your fast deck from your casual decks oftentimes because of course mana crypt was a key card judo's was a key card we do not have this on anymore regularly so it's less of a problem but also your turn one uh, soul ring into signet into mana dog finally is still so fast under, yeah finally someone understands that signet soul ring needs to be banned i mean we, i don't want to have this dis discussion about is Soul Ring better than Mana Crypt? I think we can all agree that this was a, a very interesting move, I would yeah. say, to have this kind of format. I do not agree. As you can see, uh, we were very certain that the cards are too similar to make a difference. Yeah. You cannot differentiate between these two cards. It's one and the same almost in most scenarios. Of course, you can more easily have your turn one Rhystic study with, yeah. with Crypt than with Soaring maybe, but all in all, similar cards, very fast format with these cards and a slower format without. Yeah. But it feels like even though you have banned a lot of stuff, you still have something of like a, like a functional, like, can I ask this? What's the usual game duration in minutes? Not the turn duration, but how long are games taking, like, so to say? Have you, have 40 you minutes. 40 minutes. So every, every game minutes. is usually around 40 minutes. On average. We have, of course, we have games that take 60 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously. Some games end in the draw because of time limitations. Yeah. Um, this can happen if you've got like very stacky decks against one against one another. Like you've got your Timna, Malcolm against Winota and stuff like this. These games take long. But on average, we've got 40 minute games and I find a 40 minute game to be very nice. I like this duration. I can keep concentrated. It's not boring. It's, it's, it's very, yeah, it's perfect for us. We like it. And this is, this is a point you have to find a, a way to make your community, your local community like the game that they play. Otherwise they will not come back. That's it. True. I agree. Okay. If you want to have a, a, a format that is alive, they can have their CDH decks on a Friday game night. That's perfect. And people do it. People do it all the time. We've got like very quick games, turn one, turn two wins. But when we go and say, hey, let's play a tournament, let's play the best decks possible in this uh, kind of ban list, it's a different kind of game. It's more diverse, in my opinion, um, because you, you don't see these uh, Oracle consultation wins on a daily basis anymore, which is a lot. People like it, people hate it. It's, it's very interesting to talk about. But if you give people certain limitations, and this is important, they will adapt. They will find new solutions. They will find new ways to win. As of right now, many decks are way worse. Dockside, for example, the ban of Dockside made very many decks a lot worse maybe even unplayable depending on what kind of deck you actually played but a lot of combos are gone just gone but it doesn't mean that people do not find a new way to combo a new way to adapt they will always find a solution always this is what magic is all about we have so many possibilities in edh we have got the, the biggest card pool ever and you've got so many ways to win if you want to of course, it's worse. This is this is true. Dockside is an amazing card, an amazing uh, combo piece. But the format will go on. New cards will come up. We've got so many new sets coming up. So there will always be this kind of power creep, maybe. Yeah, a short question. Among the 40 players that participate in your tournament, what have been the negative feedback from them? about this so the negative feedback was almost always about favorite cards that are banned 
that they want to see unbanned. A very prime example is Gitrock, the Gitrock monster. And we have a, a discussion about if this card should be banned. We disagree. I do not want to take a stance right now, but you know the combo, it's very popular. This is the kind of thing that people are a bit mad about. They are not mad about Mana Crypt and so on. And also people at our tournament hate certain stack pieces. They want to see it removed. But honestly, we cannot agree because this is not the kind of thing we want to see removed. We want to see a, a healthy game that you can... We want to see some innovation in your decks. We want to see, hey, can you adapt to this kind of meta? And is this stacks piece very good? We do not want to see it banned there. We, people said, Collector Oof is shutting down all my decks. I can't play. This is, this is not good. And uh, all my signets and my mana rocks are gone. Yeah, so then you have to find removal spells. It's just, if you want to go turbo, you have to find a way to remove certain sex pieces. Or a classic example would be Drenith Magistrate. Yeah, people hate it. It's turn one, turn two, and you, you can't play your commander. Oh, no, I can't play. Yeah, then find better ways to handle it, find ways to circumvent this. Of course, I don't want to, want to say uh, I diced removal. This is true for ma basically everything, but people tend to hate Tivit, for example. Tivit is also still legal mm -hmm. because people hate the ward mechanic in general, is my experience. It's very hard to remove. It, it makes you two tre treasures, so when it dies, it kind of pays for itself the first time. It's annoying. People can play a lot of stacks pieces in this deck, but overall, people are happy. I think every tournament, a new commander has won the title. Mono Green has won, Ghoul has won, Green White has won, a lot of green wins. Simic, Espa, yeah. It sounds like people have opinions on specific card choices. Definitely. Of what is like making them negative towards this approach, basically. Yes. But none of the negativity has, as you, I, I, it sounded like you said, has been towards fast mana. More like other cards that are doing things. Yeah, I think people, they actually know that maybe a Gaia's Cradle or a Soul Ring is extremely powerful. Yeah. And should probably not exist in a 100 card format in which you have to go like a mulligan and you, you want to have your soul ring, you want to have your access to your Gaia's Cradle in your first opening hand. Otherwise, it, you might have a disadvantage and they know it. This is common knowledge between the players. I mean, True. maybe they would like to play the soul ring, but deep down they know the turn one soul ring is it's too good. It's in yeah. comparison to the rest. It's If you have it, you have it. I know, but there, there's a very big risk when you have a very big power uh, power spread inside your decklist, because then yes. the luck factor becomes a bigger thing. Like if you have yeah. five cards that are gonna make you win the game if you draw them in a hundred card deck, then uh, yeah, the luck fa luck factor becomes bigger. So trying to definitely to squeeze the power level more closely so that each card is individually equal is uh, reducing the luck factor a lot. Definitely. It, it reduces a lot of luck factor, but I see why people hate it. Uh, I see why yeah. people hated the Mana Crypt ban, because they are, and I think that's the main reason, they are used to it. And it's very yeah. hard to get people away from what they're used to, to a I new approach. I actually think that the big reason people are very angry with the ban in general is that they want to play Dockside Extortionist. They like yeah, the definitely. feeling of it more than it's, the balance. It's it. like you, you, you look at your hand, you see all of your opponents ramping out, playing their crypts and whatnot, and you're like, if you would see my hand, you wouldn't do this. And it's the best feeling ever if you go like for eight treasures on a two mana spell. Yeah. Of course, it's amazing. <laughs> and this is why they print this kind of card. So we should also, also we, we need to think about this. This is a comp corporation that wants to sell you packs. And uh, when they make very expensive or very good cards, the packs sell better. This is. This is common knowledge between players. Yeah. And we have to accept that maybe sometimes they go overboard with the power level. We, 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 everybody agreed that Nadu was not the best sometimes, design. Sometimes. Uh, there's like, if you, like, Rag, even Ragavan is a power creep to the, Definitely, the highest one level one possible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, of course, some cards are so good in other formats and it does nothing in EDH. Like, I think everywhere deck can play Ragavan, doesn't have to. 
probably not. It's not the biggest downside if you don't. It's a very good card, of course, but at turn three or turn four, it's, it's a really bad top deck, for example. What have been the positive feedback uh, from some of the people playing this tournament? So the positive feedback comes from players. They say, hey, we have a lot of fun. I do not win. I still lose every game I play, maybe, because I'm not the best player. I do not have the best deck. I do not have the experience, but I can still participate without feeling so left behind. And it really sounds like you have created a format for CDH players where they can play with casual players, almost. Definitely. This was our intention because we want to actually, in all honesty, mm -hmm. us players, the, the, the host, we would like to play at the highest possible level. We want to do it. We want to have this really exciting games with lots of interaction. But if we build the best possible deck that is with the current ban list, we would obliterate most tables at our local game store. And honestly, this is not a fun experience for us. Yeah. Because we feel bad when there's someone coming who's maybe playing once a week or once a month even, and they have no idea how I win turn one or turn two. And it's like, yeah, whatever, let's start another game. And it's the same experience over and over again. And it gets boring for us because we do not at our local level, this is true for many players who do not play online, we do not have this environment where everybody plays these kind of decks. So if we tone it down, we can still, in this kind of context, play the best decks we can think about, but it's closer to the average player, you know? You have to be a bit more conservative with your choices, yes, but the average player has a better chance against you. This, does, this should not sound like arrogant, but it is true that many players do not have the, 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 the time and experience to play at this kind of CDH table. They will get absolutely destroyed because they do not have these kind of timing considerations and so on. I mean, it's also like a learning curve thing. Like you, if you want to get introduced to something, you kind of have to do it step by step, so to say. And I think exactly. something like this is very good in that regard. And as you've already mentioned as well, you already also have real CDH games going on other days, if I understood you correctly. That's true, yes. We, of course, we talk about this. This is a famous rule zero talk. They say, mm -hmm. let's say, hey, let's, let's test our strongest decks. Let's do it, you know? And uh, oftentimes we just play maybe one or two rounds because it becomes a very specific pattern, you know? And then we change up again. But um, I recommend trying it out if you have your community set, if you have got a stable community, and talk about, hey, what kind of format do you want to play? And you will probably find out your big player base will not play a CDH tournament. So let's find a solution. Let's find a solution so that more people can participate. So the main message for every viewer who, who thinks about making a kind of similar list maybe or hosting a kind of similar tournament is just do it. It will not be perfect. You will find that people find very narrow solutions for your ban list and still win on turn one or turn two, maybe. Maybe you overlooked something, but it's a process. Just go for it, try it out, find people, maybe just 12 people, 16 people, I don't care. Just get together, play some games, think about what you want to do and, and start. So if you have any big problems with a real current EDH ban list, you can always do make your own. And if you actually want to take a look at this deck list or this ban list, there's a link in the description below of this video. Thank you so much, Dave, for coming here and talking about your story. Yeah, thank you for having me once. Thank you.